Well, today I'm in Stuttgart, home of Porsche, for the unveiling of the 1 millionth 911 produced. The 911 started production in 1964, and right up to today, it's an icon in the automotive industry. This is the one car many people aspire to own. So what we're going to do while we're here in Stuttgart is we're going to go inside the museum behind us, look at the very first Porsches ever made. We're also going to go to Porsche Classic where they restore these beautiful old cars. We're going to see the one millionth car. So put your seatbelt on. Everything 911. What we do here is go back, 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 back. The Porsche Museum is right across the street from the factory in Zuffenhausen on the outskirts of Stuttgart, and it is a must visit if you are in the area. The museum has over 500 cars and rotates them regularly in and outside the museum with 80 on display. Once inside, the highlights are seeing the very first vehicle made by Ferdinand Porsche, an electric carriage. There is a replica of the first Porsche design prototype, followed by the very first Porsche 356 built in 1948. Several very early 356s are highlighted, along with race cars, plus a Volkswagen Beetle, also designed by Porsche. To see some of the very first 911s is amazing, as are some special cars like the 1974 Carrera RS. There are more modern cars on display too, plus a museum workshop that maintains these highly collectible cars. The museum also houses the extensive Porsche archives. While we were inside, we had a look at an original brochure from the 1963 Frankfurt Auto Show when this car was originally called the 901. Also, we saw some original pictures of the very first cars being produced, including one for Ferry Porsche. Speaking of Ferry Porsche, here is the very first order signed to start building the original 911. Speaking of collectible cars, the Porsche Classic Center, further out of town, is the place where owners of vintage Porsches, up to the late 1990s 993 models, can send their cars to be totally rebuilt by factory trained craftsmen. Part of this initiative is to maintain over 52,000 parts for older cars still available throughout the world at Porsche centers, not just in Germany. This has helped to keep 70% of all 911s ever made running and on the road today. For those that want to send their car to Germany, they do roughly 10 full restorations a year. That's it, with a waiting list of about a year and a half. Other services include engine or transmission work or maintenance on exotics like the 959. Now, there were less than 300 959s ever made, and eight were on display the day I visited. And one of the cool things about coming to Germany to see the 1 millionth 911 is that they rolled out three of those 1 million for us to drive. Now this one is the very first Carrera that I ever drove. This particular one is a 1981 uh, 911 SC. I can clearly remember it was the exact same color in guards red and it had a black interior and I had a chance to drive it with the roof down. I worked in valet parking. That's how I got my first taste of driving a 911. That's a 964, the first Tiptronic in the 911 family. I had the one after that, the 993. I actually had two of them and this is more of a modern car, 996 that started in North America in 1999. So we're going to get a chance to drive them and then we're also going to get a chance to see the 1 million car. Now I can clearly remember the very first time I drove a Carrera and it was this car. Exact same color. Didn't have these seats though. 911 SC. I worked at the racetrack in Toronto in Valley Parking when I was in uh, high school and I remember this car pulling in and just salivating over it and I got a ch chance to drive it in the parking lot. It was a big parking lot mind you and every single time that customer came in I ran and grab this little car and I just fell in love with just how compact and perfect it was at the time. But it's the weight, it's the size, it's the essence of the car and the feeling you get when you drive it that feels like no other car on the road. There's nothing else that feels like this little car. And uh, it's been true through all the years. The 911 is a special car and for good reason. Well, the next car I'm driving is the 964. And 
Every model of 911 has some big firsts, and this one had a lot of them. It was sold from the late 80s until 1994, and it was the first Carrera to be offered with all-wheel drive. It also bumped up the power from 3.2 liters to 3.6 liters and 250 horsepower, and was also most notable for being offered for the first time with an automatic transmission. It's only a four-speed Tiptronic. Now, Tiptronic is a well-known name in the Volkswagen, Audi, and Porsche lines. It's kind of synonymous with their shiftable automatics from those days. Uh, but you know what? This proved that people would buy a Carrera with an automatic transmission. Then they went on to bring out uh, the PDK or the dual clutch transmissions in the 997 and they become so popular now that more of those are sold than regular manual transmissions. So what they try to do with these heritage cars is pick models that signify the color of the times. So this would be 1992, it's in purple, it's a cab, it's a Tiptronic. It isn't a, a C4, it's a C2, but it was available with that all-wheel drive system. And I gotta tell you, um, only having four gears in the Tiptronic is a bit limiting, but uh, what a really nice car to drive on a nice country road like this. Uh, what a great touring car. This one only has 127,000 kilometers on it. Uh, driving a 964 reminds me a lot of driving my old 993. All right, now I'm driving in the 996, and there's some people that firmly believe that the last of the real Carreras ended with the 993, the last of the air-cooled Carreras. This is the first of the water-cooled cars, and it has been much maligned by enthusiasts in the Porsche family because it was not as good looking as the other cars, it was bigger, it was water-cooled. The interior to me was one of the weakest parts, had a sort of a flimsy looking interior on the inside. But now that all of the other Carreras are rising so quickly in value, all those vintage cars, it's helping to draw these cars up as well. And when you go back to back to back and drive this car, the one thing you notice right away is that it has that same kind of feel, engines in the back, it's got a very uh, darty and pointy kind of suspension that gets you around the corners quickly. The engine sounds similar, it's not the same, but uh, it's, it's truly a Porsche, it just is kind of like the unloved Porsche. So this car is always going to be known as kind of like the ugly stepsister in the Carrera family, but getting a chance to drive it again after all these years, I kind of wonder what all the fuss was about, because it sure drives great. As mentioned, the Porsche factory is right across the street from the museum in Zuffenhausen, and it has built the 911 ever since it was introduced. Now it's also making the 718 Boxster and Caymans alongside all the 911 variants. Even race cars are built here. To watch the Flex line produce, say, a base Cayman, followed by a 911 GT3 or a Turbo, then a Cabriolet, is an amazing example of the complexities of the process. The plant makes only 242 cars a day and 150 are 911s, with a total factory output of 50,000 units per year. Even with all the complexity, an owner can change the build of their car up to seven days before it's produced, making this an amazing example of just-in-time production. Inside the factory, of course, the main event was the one millionth car. Irish Green Carrera S, similar in color to the original 1964 model. Styling touches include a cloth houndstooth interior, wooden steering wheel, exterior accents, and of course, special badging. 
This car is set to tour the world before it finally settles back in Stuttgart at the museum on permanent display. You know what, a million 911s since 1964 sounds like a big number, but in reality, this is still a low production car. They made 30 plus thousand of these cars last year, spread all over the world. There really are quite small numbers. So whether you have an older model or you have a Turbo S, a new one like this, or the latest GTS, they all have the same characteristics, which is you can drive them to work, you can drive them to the grocery store, take them to the track and drive them home. They're wonderful cars. They really are infectious. Once they get under your skin it's hard to give them up and if you're lucky enough to own one good on you and it's going to be really interesting to see what they come out with the new 911 next year.